Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about how to make clones in Photoshop. Step one, you want to identify the photos that you want to composite together and select them all using command click in Lightroom or wherever your photos are being kept. In this case, I am selecting these five photos and I'm doing control click edit in, and then open as layers in Photoshop. When your images have opened in Photoshop, they should be all together in layers. Um, however, sometimes depending on how they open, you may need to right click background and create a layer from the background so that it can be moved around and manipulated. The next step is that you need to determine if any of your positioning of your clones needs to be adjusted and you can do this by selecting all of your layers and decreasing the opacity until you can see every layer. You won't be able to see all of them perfectly but you just need to get an idea of where they are and in this instance I'm seeing that these ones will need to be moved around. Before we get really into all the cloning you're going to need to pick a layer that is going to act as the background. So the background needs to be um, surrounded by all of your scenery and it's going to act as the part that's not moving while you may be moving some of the other images. So in this case, I know that the front one is pretty much where I want it to be. So I'm going to make sure that the very bottom layer is my background. So that one's not going to move but I might move some of the others. The next step is you want to order your layers going close to camera at the bottom to far away from the camera at the top. So right now I have far away from the camera at the bottom. I'm gonna bring this one to the top. Then it looks like this one's next. So we're gonna bring that one underneath it. Then this one than that one. So you can see that they're kind of descending away from the camera. And now we can restore, well actually we're not going to re restore opacity just yet. We're going to um, reposition them and uh, make sure that they're in the spots we need them to be. Like this one, layer one I believe. We're going to move her out a bit. And don't worry about anything else in the positioning of the background because that's all going to be cloned out. And I'm seeing that some of these are overlapping way too much. We really want to get that sense of cascading evenly and symmetrically into the distance. So we're going to go layer by layer and just adjust, oops, the positioning. And you just want to make sure that these are hitting certain landmarks, like I know that I want this person's face to be covered in the artichoke, which I know sounds weird but you can see that it's pretty much aligning with it, but we might want to block out a little bit more of the eyes. It's a little bit hard to see how this is all going to come together, but that's why it requires quite a bit of experimentation before you really get it right. And remember, we can't move our bottom layer Otherwise, as you can see here, there will be not enough background to work with. You can move the bottom layer if you want to get really fancy, and um, Photoshop has tools for replacing the background that you got rid of, but in this case, we're going to keep it simple. And as you're doing this, just remember that this is an eyeballing version. Because they're still so translucent, you can't totally tell how it's going to look, but it doesn't have to be perfect right now because as the clones come into view in one composited images, one composited image, you'll be able to move them around. It's not like this is the last chance you have. 
Okay, now we're going to get into the fun part, which is the masking. And we're going to work from t bottom to top. So we are not doing anything with the background layer because that's what's serving as our binding thread. It's just sitting there and everything else revolves around it. So we're going to start with this one being visible. We're going to restore opacity. Well, we have to have them all visible. We're going to restore opacity to 100 and then work backwards from bottom to top. So the first thing you're going to do on layer four is create a mask. And then you're going to come over here to the brush tool and paint away your clone. Once you've painted it away, it doesn't have to be perfect. You hit Command I to create the inverse. And um, don't worry about the fact that it looks like she's in front of her because all we do is paint this subject back in. And then you can, if you accidentally bring too much back, you can switch the brush and just carefully, oops, see, I'm not being very good at this. Carefully paint back in the layer behind. Then you're going to repeat that process with each of these layers. I'm going to stop here and point out something important, which is that if you are shooting um, sort of unrealistically in the sense that you're focusing on each subject as they move, uh, your focus won't be realistic in the background. So if these were actually five people, um, this one would be really crisp but the focus would progressively get blurrier and I made the decision to shoot um, as if I was shooting with a wide uh, or I mean a narrow aperture a large number aperture and um, every face is in focus but that means that the background uh, you have to make a decision there how realistic do you want it to be and you can see that difference coming through. This is the background of this girl. So of course it's more blurry than when I was shooting with a focus that was further away. So to preserve that background of the first girl, I need to get rid of this crisp uh, cement as well as this uh, line that's not accurate since we shifted this layer over. All right, so once you are done with your masking and you are satisfied with the way your layers are arranged, you can 
press Command S to save your work of art. And as you'll see in the status bar, once it's done saving, you can return to Lightroom and your composited image, image should be there. So there it is, and we are free to edit it as we please. And I know just the first thing I would do, as you've seen in the final photo probably, is I would just crop it so that uh, that ugly crate thing isn't in the way. So I hope this video taught you how to composite. It's really not that hard. It just takes a bit of patience. And I think you should go try it and share with me what you come up with. So if you would like to see more videos like this, as well as editing tutorials on how I edit these photos, be sure and subscribe to be notified when I post a new video.